Rodney Hudson's story than just he welcomed a child into this world. I got to talk about it. Kyler Murray, top five on an important quarterback list. And Buda Baker finally getting a little positive run. Alex Lancey, Locked On Cardinals, live on a Wednesday. Here we go. You are Locked On Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, welcome in. Locked on NFL Thursday. You can find me tomorrow with Tyler Rowland. Today, I'm here. Locked on Cardinals. Alex Clancy, follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked on AZ Cards. Again, I'm doing this live thing every day. I kind of like it. I like interacting with people. Um, I like people seeing that I don't do many edits to my podcast. I just kind of record. And then when 28 minutes are up, I stop. A uh, lot to talk about. Madden ratings are out. I'll talk about it for like two seconds. I want to hit more about exactly what's going on with the Arizona Cardinals organization. Kyle Odegaard put out an interesting tweet regarding a pro football focus ranking percentage-wise uh, for quarterbacks in 2021. Kyler Murray ranked very highly uh, in one specific category that's important for quarterbacks in the NFL. A um, lot to hit today. Uh, really a, a lot to hit. Um I do want to put a button on two topics that I've been talking about this week so far. One of which is Isaiah Simmons. I'm going to talk about it in the last segment. The importance of Isaiah Simmons cannot be understated. Isaiah Simmons could be the one catalyst that could take this defense from a bottom third defense to a top third defense. I'm going to talk about it in the final segment. Um, I'm going to talk Kyler Murray in the second segment. We've got to pay him a little bit of um, of time because he still doesn't have a deal. I know camp is right around the corner. Early next week is when the veterans report. Um, everybody's been telling me that I've been overreacting that Kyler Murray doesn't have a contract yet. Okay, we're going to find out in the next two weeks if Steve Keim meant what he said when he was on the Pat McAfee show 55 days ago or so saying that Kyler Murray is the future. And I want to see if Michael Bidwell is going to back up the Brinks truck for the first time really ever in, in, in this magnitude. Um, I know we paid Larry Fitzgerald over $100 million in the contract, but let's see what he's going to do with Kyler Murray. Um, I'll talk about that in the second segment. But I think it's very important to touch on Rodney Hudson just one more time here. Rodney Hudson's back. Fantastic. Okay. Rodney Hudson is the second most important player on the Arizona Cardinals roster. Uh, said that. I'll continue to say that because I truly believe it. He keeps pockets deep for Kyler Murray. He makes up for, you know, a weaker guard position for the Cardinals offensive line that's not as strong as the tackles that the Cardinals have. I mean, he's the metronome of this offensive line. He's the spine. He's so incredibly important to the success of the Arizona Cardinals. And it can't be under, and can't, that's another thing that can't be understated. Um, I did just want to, just look back because, so yes, he welcomed his daughter into this world. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, whatever it was a couple months ago. Okay. I don't know this to be 100% fact, but I'm assuming that he wouldn't get an unexcused absence from mandatory minicamp for that. It just doesn't, the blocks don't necessarily stack up the way you want them to with that. And I could be, I could be looking too much into it. And it, it's possible. I mean, it's the off season, man. We're, we're, we're putting everything under a microscope here, but unexcused absence from mandatory mini camp because he had just taken part in welcoming a new life into this world. I don't know if that is a five out of five fit to, you know, make, make, make the conclusion that, Oh yeah, obviously. He just wanted to spend time with his family and didn't let his employer know that he wanted to come back. I don't think that that's what happened. Or I don't think that's the whole story. Let me put it that way. I don't think it's the whole story. And the part of the story that we don't know may be null and void at this point because he's back. We'll see if they're going to give him a contract extension. Another one, which, which, I, which I think that they definitely should. Do not relive what they relived for that handful of weeks in the middle of the offseason. Don't do it. Resign Rodney Hudson, have him retire in Arizona Cardinal, 
have him play, you know, give him a two year contract extension for whatever 25 mil fully guaranteed, whatever. Rodney Hudson is very important to this organization. And if you have to give him a little extra cheese to keep him here and keep him playing, do it. Um, so I'm not saying that there is 100% more to why Rodney Hudson went AWOL for a while. But I think it's I think it's just a little precarious that an unexcused mandatory minicamp um, display and him having a kid, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. Now, maybe, you know, everything, if there were issues, maybe they've been resolved. He's getting paid a lot of, a lot of cake this year to come play. The Cardinals win 10 or 11 games again. Maybe, you know, he'll sign an extension and, and he'll retire a Cardinal and Kyler Murray will have the protection up front that he desperately needs at this point in his career. So I, I didn't want to, you know, open old wounds because it's great that Rodney Hudson's back. Fantastic. Everything is good. Awesome. And I just thought that mm, seemed a little weird that he had a that he had a, an unexcused absence from the mandatory minicamp earlier in the offseason. And people just chalk it up. Oh, he had a kid. Stupid. Why would you overreact to that? He had a kid. How dare you overreact and think a, a way that 100% of people are thinking? stupid. I think it's ridiculous to not think with the history that the Arizona Cardinals have had with the players who have left the organization who, and how they've talked about the Cardinals organization. I feel like it is very jaded to not think, huh, maybe the Cardinals did it again and not like, oh, oh, he had a kid. Well, that's 100% what it is. I think it's deeper than that. And hopefully whatever issues there were if there were any have been resolved and onward and upward from here alex clancy locked on cardinals thanks for making locked on cardinals your first listen each and every day free and available on all platforms i love doing this podcast i love talking with my friends who do this who do these podcasts here locked on man it's been a wild journey started in 2017 i mean we are a long ways from the Cardinals getting blanked in London against the Rams after after Carson Palmer goes out and then into the 2018 season and then where we are now, not only for the Arizona Cardinals, but for the Locked On platform, David Locke, Ross Jackson. I mean, it's a beautiful thing to watch, a beautiful thing to experience, and I'm very, very happy to be a part of it. Coming up next, Kyler Murray ranked highly in something. Shocker. I'll talk about that next. Locked On, Cardinals, but first... Bet online, bet online, betonline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in all your in on check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and ga- lines and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. One of my favorites. Bet online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting scores and podcasts. They've got you covered with all of it. Head to, the, head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, second segment Locked On Cardinals. Alex Clancy here. Again, thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen each and every day, free and available on all platforms. We've been rolling this out from starting with Monday. Which NFL stars move the betting line the most? Starting July 18th, which was Monday, Locked On gives you the 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers at Bet Online. Available starting Monday through today and through Friday on Locked On, on Locked On NFL, wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Tyler and I, Locked On NFL Thursday, will be responsible for 20 through 11 in this 50 person rank, 50 player ranking. And you may want to check that out because, uh, I don't know. Maybe somebody uh, who we hold near and dear to our hearts here in the Valley, maybe ranked in that gap there. And Tyler and I will uh, break it down for you. Um, So Kyle Odegaard, friend of the show, uh, used to write for the Cardinals, now with compare.bet, tweeted this out. The top five passing grades in the NFL last season per per pro football focus, Kyler Murray ranked third at 88.1, only behind Joe Burrow and Tom Brady and ahead of Aaron Rodgers and Kirk Cousins. Kyler Murray is good at throwing the football. So I don't really know 
the whole uh so like there are some things that are getting tired some storylines narratives that people talk about that are getting tired the ones that i talk about that people are tired of hearing is that cliff kingsbury is not equipped to be an nfl head coach um that Steve Keim and Cliff Kingsbury's contract extensions were not warranted. And um, I don't know. I think that's probably it. Um, I still stand behind both of those. And, uh, you know, it's I, I never said that Cliff Kingsbury was a bad head coach. Not once. I said that he wasn't an NFL caliber head coach. I said that he's not able to elevate players to their utmost potential and beyond like other good head coaches are. And that's the reason for the downfalls of the 2020 and 2021 season. Anybody can be a good coach when things are going well. It's when they aren't going well and you have to make the right play call in third and 12 to extend a drive to run out the clock that Cliff Kingsbury just has an inability to do. The storylines that I find tired are that Kyler Murray's too small to play football in the NFL. Rampant. Rampant. Um, That Kyler Murray can't see over the offensive line rampant he's injury prone rampant um i believe that patrick mahomes has missed more games than kyler murray has since kyler murray came into the league it's close okay um aaron Rodgers used to miss a bunch of time okay tom brady is the anomaly even though he missed that full year uh, when he tore his acl he got rolled up on um i think it was in week one uh when matt castle came in and they won double digit games and missed the playoffs like Kyler Murray plays through injury, okay? Kyler Murray is smaller than Josh Allen and Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. He is. That's true. And he's made it this far, okay? He was probably the leader in the clubhouse through eight weeks for NFL MVP last year. So people have this revisionist history, confirmation bias late in history like, Oh, I only remember the times that back up my point. Stupid. Kyler Murray, fact, is not as big as the traditional quarterback. True. Kyler Murray has missed three games last year. True. And also, I will, I've will i continued to go on the record and say that if the Cardinals were under 500 when Kyler Murray got hurt, he probably would have missed one game. It was the first year that they rolled out the 17-week season the Cardinals were comfortably in first place in the division at that point. They were number one. They, they had the number one seed in the NFC at that point. It was buying time for their quarterback. And, like, that's something that people just need to kind of understand. And Kyler Murray's not a perfect quarterback, okay? He's not. He's not a finished product either. The natural progression of Kyler Murray growing as a quarterback in the NFL is something that gets marred because there are other quarterbacks that have ruined the learning curve. Patrick Mahomes coming in and throwing, I think what was 10 touchdown passes in his first two weeks after sitting for a whole year. Excuse me, still getting over something. Um, Like Lamar Jackson coming in and having a tailored offense for the second half of his rookie year where they broke all of the records for rushing from a quarterback position, shattered the record. Like it shattered the learning curve. Uh, Justin Herbert coming in, seemingly not knowing how to play quarterback in the in in college and then them just like unlocking like oh you're big and you have and you could throw the ball really far cool let's start to use that now if i were oregon and you see justin what justin herbert is doing now like everybody should be fired everybody um but justin herbert comes in breaks the mold unfair tyrod taylor has a terrible thing happened with the team doctor i think we're uh, a needle punctured his lung so he couldn't play justin herbert comes in the rest is history joe burrow makes the super bowl like right away after tearing his ACL, like that's not what's supposed to happen. That's not what's supposed to happen. So the progression of what Kyler Murray's done is exactly what's supposed to happen. And I do think that his growth has been stunted a little bit because Cliff Kingsbury can't elevate him like other offensive minds could. You can disagree with me, and that's totally fine. That's what this is all about, okay? But what Cliff Kingsbury does or doesn't do when his team desperately needs him to do something, that's what you need to see. Not when they're winning. It's when they're close games that they lose. That's what you need to see. And sure, we can have the, you know, the confirmation bias conversation another one of, oh, well, 
when the Cardinals win, why don't you give Cliff Kingsbury credit? I do. Well, what, what, what if, you know, when, when they lose, why aren't you, why aren't you knocking the players? I'm like, I do. And it's the coach's job to elevate the talent that they have, regardless of how good the talent is. Then Joseph's done it. I don't think Cliff Kingsbury does a good enough job. I don't I think he's a great offensive coordinator. I don't think he's a great head coach and I don't know if he's going to be, but he will be around for a long time. I do know that I've, I'm resigned to my fate with that. Now that doesn't mean he's not going to improve. They've gone from five wins to eight wins to 11 wins since he's been head coach. I see the numbers too. I see the numbers as well. And what I remember I don't need, I didn't need to see anything else because week one, Tennessee on the road. First turnover by the defense. Chandler Jones strip sack. The Cardinals get a short field. False start, timeout, field goal. That's all I needed to see because that's what happens with Cliff. And sure, you could say, oh, the false starts on the players. Only undisciplined teams get penalized as much as the Cardinals do. And that's coaching. That's staying on the same page with the quarterback. The quarterback's staying on the same page with the offensive line, calling audibles, checking at the line. That is what stable organizations don't have to deal with. And I'm not saying the Cardinals aren't stable right now because the stability is starting to grow every year. But bad penalties during times where they should be scoring touchdowns, that's on the coaching. It's on the coaching. And that's the issue I have. Cliff is a fine coach. But I don't think he elevates the talent like good coaches do. And that's something the Cardinals desperately need if they want to make any sort of playoff push in the foreseeable future. Alec Clancy locked on Cardinals. There's another thing the Cardinals are going to need to make a playoff push in 2022. I'm going to talk about that next. All right, final segment, Locked on Cardinals. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, Doing this live stuff, you know, I think it's fun. Uh, Leave questions in the chat. Like, I'm happy to throw out my rundown. If somebody asks me a good question and we get a conversation out of it, happy to do it. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked on AZ Cards. Uh, Getting closer and closer, man. Like, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I mean... Week one is, it's getting real, real quick. We're almost at the end of July, man. We made it. We made it. We made it. Like, this is the second semester of senior year of high school. This is the second semester of senior year of high school. Where you're like, you hopefully you got in your college already, and you're coasting. You know? You're coasting. You're blowing bubbles in the back with your feet up. This is, this is, we're so close. And I equate this to, like, the end of August in Phoenix, where it's like, ooh, good weather's coming. I can see it. I can see it. And that's where we are. I'm super excited about that. So there's a couple of things that I've talked about this week that are very important. Rodney Hudson's return, obviously, has just blew the roof off the storylines here. The importance of Rodney Hudson cannot be calculated, cannot be uh, qualified, quantified. Um, do I think that the un- unexcused absence from mandatory minicamp early on is kind of a question mark, even though he just had a kid? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, because that wasn't Steve Kime that came out and said, oh, he had a kid, you know, we're excusing him, everything's fine. That wasn't that. So something to keep an eye on. Obviously, he's coming back. So if there were issues, chances are they've been resolved or at least they've been pushed under the rug through this year and we'll deal with it, you know, whatever happens at the end of the season. Um, Kyler Murray's really good at football. And the vitriol behind... Kyler Murray's performance during the second half of the season. Obviously, the flashball memory was the pick six, the underhand pick six in the end zone against the Rams. The Rams just flat out wanted to win more. But it, we, it's not like we didn't see that coming. Cardinals got beat by Seattle before that. Like, the Cardinals were not a good football team the second half of last season. They lost to Detroit on the road. They didn't clinch, their own, they didn't clinch a playoff spot on their own. It was a bad second half of the season last year. Yes, DeAndre Hopkins was out, absolutely. But that's not the first time the best player on offense got injured in the history of the NFL. 
many teams reacted better than what the Cardinals did last year. There is one player this year. I talked about him yesterday. I'm going to continue to talk about him because I think he's going to have a breakout year. And it's going to be must-watch television if he unlocks that last little piece that catapults him to fringe Pro Bowl status and beyond. And it's Isaiah Simmons. Like, this is the year. This is the year. What we saw from Christian Kirk, and I'll get back to it in a second, what we saw from Christian Kirk was flashes. We saw, as I call the oh my God moments, but not with enough frequency, but not frequently enough to be like, oh yeah, he deserves a second year. And I mean, what he got from Jacksonville, good for him. I'm glad he got his money. But he never got there. He never got there. And uh, Byron Murphy, we're looking at that now. Can he get there? Can he be the guy? Can he be a CB1? Or are the Cardinals going to get burned all year? Isaiah Simmons has capability to do much more than both Byron Murphy and Christian Kirk could do in their respective positions. And if he's able to have the game slow down just a little bit more for him and really just lock into the, I'm the most important player on the defensive side of the ball for the Cardinals, because he is. If he can be, if he can take that step, this defense, I think I tweeted out, could, could be special. I think that's a little much, but if you have Buda Baker and Isaiah Simmons on the same side of the ball, playing at all at, at all pro or you know pro bowl level it makes it a lot easier on the other position groups because that will allow Zayvon Collins to grow and mature and in a more natural way than like oh hey your safety net's gone bro Jordan Hicks out you got to do it right now or this defense is gonna be in trouble if Isaiah Simmons can take that step forward and that and Troy good point and, and Jalen Thompson if if let's put it this way, that, 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 that that's, that's good. Let, let me put it this way. If Zayvon Collins can be the Jalen Thompson to the Buda Baker, which would be Isaiah Simmons, the Cardinals would be cooking. The Cardinals would be cooking because then Steve kind would be right. The drafting may have taken a little bit longer drafting two ILBs in the middle in, in two first rounds, back to back years. But if Zayvon Collins is to Isaiah Simmons as Jalen Thompson is to Buda Baker, this defense could really be good for a long time because these guys are kids. I know Buda Baker, I think he's 26 at this point, but he's very, very much. Yeah, he's 26. Very, very much in the beginning of the really, 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 really good times. I mean, safeties play forever. And I know he plays with a little bit more volatility, a little bit more anger. Even though he's got a big baby face smile. Um, if Zabin Collins can be the Jalen Thompson to the Isaiah Simmons, we could be looking at something special because that's two levels that are solid. The safety group is the, is the best position group of the defense for the Cardinals. I think that goes without saying. Um, there's a lot of question marks, but there are question marks on most rosters. And it's the job of the stars to cover up, to put band-aids on those question marks or holes. And that's why Isaiah Simmons is, if he's great, this defense will be great. Maybe not this year, but if you look, okay, so if you're a free agent, all right, at the end of this season, the Cardinals win 10 games, maybe they win a playoff game, something like that. Like they don't win six games. Say, say they replicate what happened last year just in a different form where they don't start out 7-0 and and then, you know, fall down to earth in the second half of the season. Say they win 11 games. Say they win a playoff game. And they, and they, and they you know, and, and they're a field goal away from making the NFC Championship game or something like that, where you think that, you know, they're going to grow and Kyler Murray's really, he gets paid. Kyler Murray becomes the guy that everybody thinks he's going to become and is becoming. And you look at this offense, DeAndre Hopkins, Hollywood Brown, James Conner, uh, Rodney Hudson, you no, know, DJ Humphreys, and you got guys. And then you look at the defense. You see Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson. 
and then Byron Murphy. Say Byron Murphy has as good of a year as he did last year, maybe improves about it by 20%, which really makes Steve Kime think, you know what, we got to pay him. Like, if let's say that Byron Murphy has a season this season where it's like, we got to pay him. Steve Kime's saying to himself. And not a Christian Kirk here where it's like, go make your money somewhere else. You look at Buda Baker, Jalen Thompson, you look at Byron Murphy who's taking a step forward. Maybe Cam Thompson or Jai Sanders, one of them pops. And then Isaiah Simmons has a Pro Bowl year this year. You think free agent defenders wouldn't want to come play with those guys? Like, Isaiah Simmons is catnip for people who love watching defensive players crush. And if he can take that step forward, woo! Woo! I did too. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, just picture it. Because we saw it at Clemson. I know they were playing a lot of Pittsburghs there. A lot of Pittsburghs, a lot of bad teams, a lot of a lot of kids who had first period French on Monday after getting mauled by Isaiah Simmons on Saturday. But if he plays 90% of the snaps and if they find the right role for him, because it's still kind of a learning process with him, not with him, with the coaches and where to play him. Like if they find, okay, this is your role. Do it A plus. And he does. And that allows Zavins Collins to kind of feed off his jet stream. Could be cooking for a long time with the Cardinals defense. And that is where Vance Joseph thrives with being able to elevate talent. And we've seen it. We've seen it over the last couple of years. Alex Lindsay locked on Cardinals. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I'll probably be doing live the rest of the week. And then um Remember, every halftime of every game this year, I'll be doing a halftime show right here on Twitter and YouTube. Um, thanks for hanging out. I was saying to you, Locked On Cardinals. Remember to check out me and Tyler Rowland on Locked On NFL tomorrow to break down number 20 to number 11 of the top 50 most important NFL players, according to Bet Online, as it pertains to moving the line. And you might know one of the names between 20 and 11. I was 